Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, uh, Mr. Reedsman, would you call the roll, please? Uh, Supervisor Kramer. Here. Clerk Reedsman, here. Treasurer Dillahay. Here. Trustee Vance. Here. Trustee Pearson. Mm -hmm. Absent. Board member conflict of interest, if any? None here. None? None. None. Okay. Uh, before we get started, I have a, a, an announcement I want to make. I learned today from Congressman Barrington's office that on July 28, 2023, the Congress passed and the President signed Public Law 118-12 as follows, designation of PFC Justin T. Patton Department of Veterans Affairs Clinic. Paragraph A, designation the Community-Based Outpatient Clinic of the Department of Veteran Affairs, located at 5739 Highway M68, Indian River, Michigan, mm -hmm. shall after the date of the enactment of this act be known and designated as the PFC Justin T. Payton Department of Veterans Affairs Clinic. Great. So, uh, congratulations to the Payton family. It's been a long time coming. And uh, I talked to Don uh, earlier. Uh, this evening, and he, uh, the family's uh, very appreciative. Uh, public comment on agenda items, please. I just wanted to. Is it working? Yeah. Yep, there um, I just wanted to clarify um, the last meeting I uh, discussed um, the hangar uh, lease compared to uh, what I paid for my uh, lot on Shawnee. Um, so that just to say that it was in the ballpark of what they're paying for a lease on an annual basis, and that's true. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was the revenues and the property tax um, breakdown. For revenues because I did that before I last summer when we first started talking about the airport so revenues were uh, PIEG was about eleven $1 hundred dollars a year the leases were forty seven seventy six property taxes ten thousand five hundred and three dollars and that does not include uh, Mr. Graybix because his wasn't assessed at that time so the total for um, revenues was sixteen three seventy nine the breakdown um, <clears throat> for the property taxes was this, and I took this right off their statements. So the state got out of that uh, 10,503, the state got 2854, and that was both for allocation and the EDU. The county got $608, and that was for senior citizens, ambulance, 911, and county road. Um, the township got $1,612, and that was for police lights, library, admin fees, and fire. And the school um, got $5,394. Um, so, and that was for operating debt and ISD. So the point is, is that um, it's not that these guys are not contributing to the community. They absolutely are. Um, this is the hangar owners have been taking care of this airport for about 90 years and somebody has to take that into consideration the amount of revenue that would have been um, lost or the cost of the township had we the taxpayers had to take care of it they did it for nothing they used their own equipment and I think that needs to be taken into consideration before we talk about not renewing leases before we talk about building something on the airport property or selling the airport property. That's all. Public comment on agenda items, anybody else? Public comment is closed. Um, Jay, Bills? Just one second. Well, you all have in front of you the, you all have in front of you the invoice register. Uh, I'd like to make, I'd like to move that uh, we pay the bills. <coughs> Jay moves to pay the bills. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? Any discussion? Bruce is uh, cemetery, correct? Yes. That's correct, yes. Ponham is cemetery software, correct? Correct. Yeah. We're moving it from one computer to another. <coughs> well, I mean, actually, actually, that's the uh, the cost, but we're also in the process of moving it from one computer to another. 
quiet. Sorry about that. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I just said that uh, that's the Pontum uh, expense for the year. Mm -hmm. And the rental ex express was for the leaf blower? The 2588, yes, is right. the and uh, then blown engine and the leaf blower. Mr. Makowitz is for the paint for the runway. I can't yes. wait to do that. I get to run the blower for that. Um, Edna Supply. Okay, is there any further discussion on the bills? No. No. Uh, view, view, the tree service was cemetery capital expenditure, correct? Uh, it, yes, I believe so, yes. Right, it's part of the 20000 okay. It definitely was cemetery. Any further comments? No. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 2024 firework dates. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that um, our date would be July 5th. I've already talked to them and... Friday. Um, that's and they've got it on tentative for us until we authorize it. So our, our uh, regular date would be July 5th. And our rain date, um, I'm proposing that it be July 6th or 7th, depending on the company, and I'll have to call them to see. Okay, um, is there a second for that? I'll support that. Discussion? Uh, July 5th is a Friday. The chances of us getting Saturday are pr practically nil. That's why I did seven too. And it, even if we had, we couldn't afford it anyway, if we could get, for some reason, it's either the Fourth of July or Saturday's the most popular date in Northern Michigan. So I'll talk to them and see. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay, next item, hangar lease, and uh, the leasee, John, would like to speak. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Yeah. The roads from Alba and here are getting well-traveled, mm -hmm. and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, just a kind of a clarification point from the last time, it was, I think, a week ago yesterday. Can you hear me all right through this? Yeah. I'm a soft talker, so here we go. Uh, as you might remember, I built this hangar, or had it built, in 1998, and I uh, had a lease, and I can't even recall what that first lease was, but I expanded it in 2002, and at that point, the lease was changed to 10-year lease uh, with renewals at the 10-year mark with the idea of raising the, the <coughs> annual fee, which is basically based on a square foot fee, went from 10 cents a square foot, which came to $600 at 6,000 feet, to 15 cents a square foot, it came to $900. And then, as you know, I, uh, went, I went beyond the date of requesting a renewal and sent a letter with a check for 1350 indicating that I would renew at, the, at a 10-year level, again, assuming that this board would raise it 50% since it was stated that's the max they could do in the lease. And so that took that up to 22 and a half cents a foot, which is 1350. Um, and, and of course, when that was proposed to you last Monday, that was rejected. So. Uh, I just thought about this a lot, of course, as you planned, I would this week. And, um, and I just want to say that uh, I've had, uh, the last renewal that I had was in 12, uh, January 1, 12, with an expiration date of December 31st, 22, which you know. Uh, I've been looking hard at that lease again, and I noticed that Article 4B states that in the event the lease shall remain beyond, shall remain beyond the expiration date of the term herein, it is the intention of all the parties uh, actually, it says intention of the parties here too, and it is hereby agreed that tenancy from month to month basis shall prevail. So I believe that the 12, the 2012 lease is still uh, active, and I uh, prefer to at this point go month to month basis until we can come to some conclusion as to what this lease might be. Um, you have a check of mine for 1350, and if that stays dormant, I'd be happy to write you a check for uh, $600, which then it could take us $75 a month through which is the equal to through August, uh, and if you want to keep the other check dormant. So I'm, I'm willing to pay for that to get that going. I feel that uh, for the benefit of the present and future hangar owners, um, all of these should be the same language. It's, it's difficult. I have the one that's off. All the other 10 have the same language and the same fee per square foot, which, by the way, is what I've been paying, 15 cents a square foot. So this, uh, this lease at $900 actually is 15 cents a square foot, which is the same all the rest of them are paying. 
So uh, I just, I, this may take a little few guts to ask you this, but I respectfully request that you at least consider a new lease under the same terms as all the others. Um, I, of course, uh, know that that is not going to set well, and I also know that that doesn't solve the problem of balancing the revenue versus the expenses. We've had some discussion about that, a couple of us here and there, and I believe that it can be done and should be accomplished in some other way, for instance, through um, uh, Michigan Airport uh, Improvement pro Projects, which is the AIP funds that are available to airports to help them with, if, with fixing hangars or fixing runways, sorry, and taxiways and various things. Uh, maybe state grants, maybe um, airport events, maybe even donations to come up with uh, the money that, that is a shortfall. I understand from the budget this year with, with less, of course, the runway fixing is near 6,000 and I think we're they're darn close to it uh, with the revenue that we have. So from that standpoint, I think it's nearly balanced and I appreciate the fact that you want that to be done. I might state that 25-year leases and that $5, you've saw it in at least the $5 a year or $5 every five years, that is not uncommon language. It's actually in the language of my lease in Alma. I was shocked to see it when I pulled it out of the drawer uh, and read that. <laughs> and I have a 25-year lease. By the way, there right now it's gone up to 30 cents a square foot, but I have a tiny hangar, so uh, it's, it's about 200, 200 some bucks a year. And I've talked to several property hangar owners around, and we looked at different leases or different airports. In fact, I called a couple of them. It looks like uh, Gaylord is possibly 10 or 20, or I think 25 or 30. It's the choice of the hangar owner. I can't imagine why anybody would choose a five-year lease, but they can, I suppose, to choose a 10. I also found out interesting about Boyne City, if this is of interest to you. Boyne City allows a person to build a hangar, and, and they charge them a dollar a year for 20 years but then you give it to the city, and then they rent it back to you. So I talked to a hangar that's done that. I talked to another one that wants to, and he says, I don't know if I'm gonna put 300,000 in a hangar and then give it to him in 10 years. But so it's not consistent, but I just want to just appeal to you as a board that I'd like to get this behind me, and, uh, and I wish that we could come up with a, with a lease. I can go month to month as long as we need to, but it'd be nice to get it done. So thank you for listening, appreciate it. You have any questions for John? questions for John I'm a little mystified that after you signed a 10-year lease people back here without board approval signed a new lease for a new hangar owner for 25 years so I can see where you're coming from right I mean I thought I looked at this 10-year lease for a long time uh, many times and I think that's what just my personal opinion this is what we all ought to be moving towards sure, sure. Yeah, the last one was signed in September of just this last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, and, yeah. and there was no board approval for that. I don't know how that slipped by us, but we, I'm sorry, but I don't. You said I don't live here. Were you in your offices last year? Did you no. take this? No. Was it this? Well, I was January? on the board, but it never yeah. came before the board. Never came before the board. Okay. Yes. Huh. Well, I'm sorry. I guess obviously I was. Wouldn't have any way right. to know that. Right. Right. Not your fault. No, it's 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 on us. That's yeah, what I'm right, saying. Right. So so John, um, we had discussed that one of your main concerns was the resale. Yes. Um, and that therefore the reassignment of the lease. So that was one requirement that uh, you had. Right. And another requirement was just the term, the number of right. years. Right. And I happen to concur that ten years seems like the right number of years. It's a balance between. Um, Inflation, let's say, you know, 25 yeah. years at a exactly. similar price, uh, you know, costs can double sure. or triple in you know, a period of time. Sure. Gosh, uh, maybe we could talk. And yet, and yet you, as a as a person who's invested a great deal of money in the hangar, uh, you won't like the longest lease you can right. get. So we well, have to find a balance. Sure. Okay. And and I'm 77, so there's a good chance in 10 years I may not be legally flying, although I'd like to. Uh, You'll be just I don't know very many 90 year old pilots. You now. may not be legally driving. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, I started flying when I was 16 and I've been going ever since. And uh, it's just been one of my pleasures in life to have an airplane if I can. And there's been years I couldn't because we couldn't afford it. But by the way, if you don't know, my airplane's a 1974, but it is airworthy. So I offered these guys a ride, but I don't think they want to ride in a 74 airplane with a 77 year old pilot, but maybe so. Well, John, I just want to thank you for everything you do for the airport over, and everything you've done over the years. I mean, you have tens of thousands of dollars of equipment out there that you let 
the township use right. that you don't have to let the township use and a lot of that yeah. it's all out of your pocket all the maintenance seems to be out of your pocket <coughs> almost all the fuels out of your pocket I wanted so, to say Bob that he's uh, he's uh, he hasn't donated a truck to just the use of the truck to the airport yeah. pickup right. truck uh, plus a, a heavy-duty uh, zero turn lawnmower plus uh, tractor. a tractor Plus, uh, he takes care of the uh, fuel depot. He basically orders fuel so that uh, they, they meet our our insurance. You're making our parks uh, parks department yeah. look bad. bad. With all that like, get, get some volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I agree with your comments, Bob. That uh, you know John has done a lot for the airport, and I believe we'll continue to try to do more as we go forward. Believe it well. Thank you for that. Any other questions for John? Any motions? Well, so yeah, since, since we're discussing before I have a motion on the table, yeah. so John, my, my concern is that in 10 years of the current rate of inflation, that, that our costs will double. So if we're already in the hole to the tune of $8,000, we, we would anticipate in 10 years at 6% inflation to be closer to 16 grand in the hole. And many of the leases are much longer than yours. I know that I have my own toys, and I pay much more than this to put my toy in the water for a very short period of time so every year. I do too, yeah. Yep. So I, I want it to be equitable. I want it to be equitable to the people that live in this township with an average household income of something around $35,000 a year mm -hmm. who aren't in a position to have an airport uh, hangar or have an airplane yes. or even afford to get in an airplane unless someone's donating a ride. I'd be happy to. By the way, uh, we fly Young Eagles for free too, as you might, might you know, we've had, the last time we had a Young Eagles event, which is kids aged uh, uh, 12 to 16, I think. We, out here at this airport, we had a hundred and some kids from the area that took free airplane rides. That's through Experimental Aircraft Association. But look, can I speak just to a minute, for a minute, you know, there was a time when I had $30,000 income also. Um, not today. I own a company that has 130 employees and by most standards, I'd be considered rich. But, um, but it, just because you have money doesn't mean that you don't care for people. I have lots of employees who are making 50 or 60,000. But the thing is that the taxes that are paid here are paid by non-residents as well as residents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it's, it's a miss for the residents to think, and by the way, they, they could vote five mils increase and we just go for it because we can't vote here. Um, so I, I take a little bit of exception, although I, I have a lot of empathy for people that can't afford to buy. In fact, I just saw, I don't go to the grocery store. I just saw a bag of potato chips that my wife bought for the kids that were here. Five ninety nine for an eight ounce bag of potato chips. I said, are you kidding me? I mean, that's nuts. You know, you just, she, my wife still collects uh, stuff to get, in, you know, once you're, once you're down there in the farm, you don't come off of very easy. But anyway, we have empathy for that. So I appreciate it. But I, I don't think that, I want to make sure that people in resort areas at least I want to say my feeling is there's a lot of people paying taxes here. And when you have, my house certainly wasn't a million bucks. I built it 30 years ago. But there's our, you know, on the lake, there's multi-million dollar homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, those taxes go to do the library and everything else. And um, so I'm just saying, I appreciate that. And, and, and I'm not saying I don't appreciate it, but, I, you know, if... It's the gremlins. We worked so hard to get rid of that problem, and here we are. Um, you know, I, I once tried to make a deal with my dad when I was a much younger person because I live in that airport takeoff. Oh, do you? Hey, hey Dad, okay. you pay for me to get licensed, and I'll fly you up here whenever you want. Sure. He, he never took me up on that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of aviation. I have helped the Yankee Airport or the Yankee Air Museum downstate when I lived down there, sure. and I miss working with those yeah. ladies. They're great folks. But, um, you know, we all have things that we're passionate about, and, and I know it's not your intention to have other people subsidize your hobby. Right. And that's all I'm trying to get to right. is something that's equitable for the township. And if we're using the, if, if people outside of the hangar owners right. are using the airport 20% of the time, then the township should pay 20% of the maintenance. Right. But, but we're, we're subsidizing that to the tune of several thousand dollars, 20,000 over the last two years. And I don't see that as something that's sustainable for the community. I, I can't argue the question because I don't know the details, but I know that probably the hangers, if you add them up, it's probably been that amount over the last years also. So I, 
I, obviously that's your job, you're the treasurer. I have to believe what you say. Um, but again, I know I went, I, by the way, speaking of lessons, when I took lessons in 63, it was $13 an hour for a wet airplane. It was a lot of money. But I worked at the airport gas and airplanes to help subsidize that, and yes, my dad kicked in a little bit. He didn't like, well, my mom was my first passenger, by the way, for what it's worth. But, um, but anyway, yes, I appreciate the fact that it's, it's hard work. And, uh, so anyway, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we, we really. Here, take this one. Take this one, Bob. How do you know that's me? Because when I turned mine on, it just kept going. Oh, yeah. But I could be proven wrong. Yeah. Um, um, you know, we have other problems out there that have nothing to do with this lease. But we have a problem in the whole township. There is no uh, revolving fund. What do you call it? Capital improvement revolving fund. There's, Seeking fund. We're, we're not putting anything aside right. for the entire. Uh, township much less the airport right. and we I, I think we agreed in our previous deliberations in December and January that we wanted to work towards that eventually is that correct yeah was that yeah. your understanding and I can speak right. to that. I, I'm anxiously looking forward to those meetings that we can come together as hangar owners and, and township board to figure out a way to handle this uh, there's got to be a way yeah to make this work there well, is we just well, well I think I, I think with this uh, income that we're going to get uh, we're going to be able to take care of uh, the um, uh, crack ceiling. I think we'll have money left over. Right. Uh, I'll I'll just tell you at some later date I'll ask this board to put that money away in a sure. capital uh, uh, in, a improvement fund. Like well, fund, some kind of fund. We'll yeah. let her handle that. But um, um, may, I, may I speak to a comment you made last Monday yeah, about sure. the potential growth for this township? I sure. Think. You mentioned something about apartments or houses or something being built, and you expect this to be maybe another Boyne City at some point where it really flourishes. Well, I didn't say Boyne City. Oh, didn't you? Maybe I added that. Okay. <laughs> some, someone did. <laughs> Somebody did. Somebody did. But if that's the case, so maybe some of those people will have airplanes. Maybe they'll want to build a hangar here like I did when I came up here. Well, I believe you're correct because one of the folks that is looking at investing in our community is spending 15 uh, to 17 is proposing considering spending 15 to 17 million dollars on boy toy condos is right. what I call them. Okay. Yeah. Is that a good, Ron, is that a good description? Call them toy boxes. And um, okay. so, yes, those folks are going to be flying airplanes. Sure, right. I would think they might. Um, anyway. And if, you know, if, if we continue to get growth in the hotel industry, that's another reason for people. Sure. I don't fly up here. I so. do believe, um, if I could interject here, John, that we have to figure out an equitable format so everybody's lease is the same, for one thing. Mm -hmm. our, our policy going forward. This is our template right. going forward. I think that, that is helpful. I don't know if it would be based on square footage or similar to what we do with the sewers where, you know, um, you get so much, you know, as a RU payment and then things go up with uh, consumers. Of the CPI, you know, the inflation every year, sure. and then you figure that out because our cost it could be something like that. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. But not all of this is your all's responsibility either. We have a responsibility as a board to make sure when there's other people using um, the facility that we get um, payment for it, just like we get payment for parks when people use our park system and such. And so, like, if there's a, a a carnival, let's say, or or maybe when there's a lot of parking for an event and they have to use sure. that area, um, we should charge a parking fee. We should maybe look into um, tie down fees and sure. things like that, like other airports do. Just just because it's our property, we're responsible for it as well, sure. not just throw it all on the hangar owners. Sure. And um, so we need to get to that equitable part. The timber sales will help. But it's a temporary fix. Yeah, um, I mean, that only happens every 25 to 40 years. Exactly. Year, right? I'm not really interested in selling any of the airport property other than what we maybe talked about on the west side of I-75 because that's really of no um, use to directly to the airport. I would c consider something like that. But that's also a temporary fix. So what do we do in the long haul? And that's what we're, we're trying to figure out as a board 
20 years down the line, 30 years down the line, when there may be the second or third generation of hangar owners and they're not putting sweat equity into it like y'all did, and very much appreciate because that, that, that is where we are today. You know, without that sweat equity, we would not be here today. So um, we need to, and we respect that highly, but we have to look at the 20 year, when these leases are coming up, sure. what what we're looking at there, what's, and what's, that's what we're trying to What's do. the new standard? Exactly. Uh, Ms. De La Hot, is that, I pronounced that right? Uh, you, may, you, you may uh, uh, know because you were on the aviation, but there's fly-ins all the time in the summer. I've gone to several. Our city, our township, our community has never hosted a fly-in. We, as an EAA chapter, have hosted it. I flew to one last year to Washington Island for a fish boil, uh, and there's one down in a, a town near uh, Gladwin for, for fly-ins. We could have fly-ins hosted by the community, and the profit from that could go to help offset the budget. Just saying. Because pe people look forward to buying a $100 hamburger because of the gasoline cost to get there. But yeah, this is how it works. So anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate thank your time. You, John. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Any motions? I make a motion that we give them a 10-year lease, but um, he proposed the $1,350. I say, um, as part of my motion, 10-year lease at $1,350 base pay based on the current uh, yearly CPI for a raise. Much like we, we do with the source. Perfect. That's my, my motion. Is there a second? No second. Any discussion? So... If I understand it correctly, the motion is <coughs> renew the 10-year lease, but instead of the 50% increase, tie it to the CPI. Tie it yearly to the CPI. Yearly to the CPI. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should ask John, what do you think? In lieu of uh, it going up 50% at yes. the end of the 10 years? <clears throat> I, don't, uh, I may be stepping on something I don't want to, like a landmine here, but I would say the CPI, what is the CPI now? Does anybody CPI, it would be the CPIU. Uh, traditionally, it's between 2 and 3 percent. This last year, it was 6.4 percent, but that was a blip in the radar. I would agree to that. Uh, I want to make sure I got this right. Ten-year CPI doesn't an average 2 to 3, anywhere from 2 to 4 percent. My crystal ball is quite cloudy today. <laughs> no, historically. Historically, it's been under 5. Yes. The, the current rate is, has not been seen in several decades. Yes. Uh, may I suggest maybe a not to exceed 5% or something so, we, so I can anticipate a cap somewhere? Yes, I think that's a, well, in a year when it's 6.4, that's sort of a giveaway. Yeah, but this that, year it was, was 6.4 from yeah. 24 yeah. to 22. Our company deals with foreign currency all the time, and I can tell you it's up and down like the wind. And when you buy British pounds yeah. at such and such, you're paying a price, and you just take the risk. So yes, you're going to buy it in a down year or an up year, uh, and I appreciate that. But yeah, the, it could be two percent next year. It'll right. be the Consumer Price Index dash Urban, pegged to the uh, January, uh, uh, the uh, January publication by the Department of Labor S Statistics. Yeah. We do the same thing for our sewer system. Sewer, sure. we do the same thing. We up it according to, we, with our sewer system, we do it with we do a minimum, State Park. We do it with minimum of 6% every year with it, but that's because, that's different. That's, yeah. that's because of a different yeah. situation. Yeah, with the State Park. But we do tie it to the CPIU. Yeah, the um, State Park's and, one of the lower two, correct? And that would cover the inflation mm -hmm. that we would cover for costs that particular year if it goes up goes down you know stay steady whatever it kind of handles the inflation part of the situation so if i were to receive a cap would you suggest a number right i would not favor a cap at all i don't think it's fair to so the motion on the table doesn't include a tap uh a a uh, yeah. cap so the motion on the table right now is renewed for a 10-year term uh, starting at thirteen hundred and fifty dollars, uh, adjusted annually every January by the CPIU. Is that correct? Yes, that is my motion. And we had a second. Is there any more discussion? 
So, roll call, Jay, please. Roll call. Um, Vance. Yes. Uh, Dillay. Yes. Kramer. Yes. Reed's going yes. It's four to, four to zero. Thank you. Okay. Ask, okay. Yes, one other thing. Thank you. In the past, I used to get, my wife, we used to get invoices during the night. December for that payment? Yes, that will happen. Well, we it, it will happen. You won't get it in December because no. we have to get the January publication date first. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Well, as soon as we get it, you'll get a check. But in the meantime, you have my check. Well, we, we have your check, so you're good for the year. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Thank, uh, thanks for your patience, John. Yeah, sure. And thank thanks for everything you do for the airport. Thanks for everything you do at the airport. You're welcome. It was eye opener. Thank you. Um, next thing is sewer issues. Uh, uh, last time we talked about the criteria sheet. Uh, I move that we add one more uh, category to the criteria sheet called condos. Right now we have uh, apartments, we have duplexes, we have residences, but no condos. And I don't want any. Uh, I don't want any. Uh, misunderstandings down the road. Uh, a condo is in fact a residence, but I just wanted to have more clarity and more certain so certainty. So my motion is that we add condos at the rate of one REU uh, to the sewer criteria list. I'll second that. Discussion? Is there a particular concern with Usage of the system in a condo versus a single-family residence? I just don't. I mean, I've heard stuff. I've heard some people say, well, a condo is like an apartment. It's only 0.5. An apartment, as you know, is 0.5. Gotcha. You know, a condo is, in fact, in my opinion, a residence. It's not an apartment. Um, and generally, most of the times, they are larger than apartments. And frankly... Um, even if you use the apartment 0.5, you still round it up to one. So let, you know, uh, other things on our criteria sheet, let's say it's 4.5. Well, you round that up to five anyway. I, I just think uh, the more certainty that we can have, the more explicit um, categories we can have, we avoid problems down the road because we know condos are coming, don't we? Yes, thank you. Bob, I would also interject, uh, considering the discussions that we've had at the Commerce Park, I would be very clear on your language because the state allows condo plans to be filed on developments other than residences. Right. So I would be very clear on your, what language you state so that there is a differentiation between a condo with a C of O and a condo that meets the condominium condominium requirements but is not intended as a residence that is, <clears throat> well that's that, all that, those are two distinctly different animals that's a whole nother issue from what i've seen uh at some of the other communities they have a description for oh, every single item on that criteria sheet we that's, do not we do not that's what i was going to get at i think we need to examine, maybe by square footage, what an apartment is, what a duplex is, what a condo is. So that way we have a guideline of how to assign that particular thing and instead of just kind of like assuming or trying to come to maybe square footage, resident capacity, whatever. Um, I know with the housing, you know, it's one RU, no matter if it's a two bedroom, one bath, or a six a 20. Bed, yeah, six bedroom, six bath. I mean, it's still one, but we still. We, we, but on the apartments, duplexes, and condos, we we specifically give them separate. Um, I mean, you you can call a condo point five, but they're still going to pay one REU. Well, because it, it rounds up. Yes, if it's a bought condo. Now, if it's a rented condo. Um, that might be something completely different because there'd be different units in the same building. I don't know how we would differentiate. So that's why maybe going by square footage, so we actually say an apartment is considered maybe 750 feet or less, 
you know, or whatever, something like that. I think we need to work on definitions <coughs> so that way we can specifically say what an apartment is, what a condo is, what a duplex is. Yeah, it only takes people, staff, time, and money. Well, I know, but I think that's something we need to work on. What you're looking for is an objective measure. So yeah. Could yes. be the number of bedrooms could be square foot, could be all the above, could be. Well, here's something else for you. Metrics. That's yeah. your favorite right. word. So, so, so let's say, let's say you got a, a residence, and it's five bedrooms, right? Well, one would think right off the top of your head, well, they ought to pay more. Well, maybe not, because maybe, <clears throat> maybe they only come up here a couple of weeks a year. It's so would, a single family. Yeah. Right. So. Would that be fair? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying everything above five bedrooms or more is two REUs, maybe it's uh, have to a, a, a meter. So, so how would the county assess whether whether the septic system was built appropriately in those two situations? And I think that's by bedroom. Yeah. So I think that's the starting point. If if we're going to go in that direction, and if we're going to go in that direction. Frankly, I think at some point it would be easier just to put meters on everybody in. Oh, labor. I, yes. I, labor, I, labor, labor, labor. Yes, I agree. It be an office of the sewer management all by itself. In this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so is there any further discussion on the motion in the second? Uh, no, not for me. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, emergency building repair. Uh, I'd like to take the board's get the board's approval to just enter into a discussion phase and turn this over to the deputy supervisor. Any objections? None. 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 Ron. None. So we've been getting quotes for the turn crack. The on. I don't have one. All right, just speak up. Been getting uh, quotes for the crack and the leak in the south wall of this building. Um, we have two in our hand. They are um, five figures but encouraging, they're low five figures, uh, working on number three, also working, looking for an engineer, a structural engineer to review those three quotes once we get them. Um, had a very encouraging meeting this afternoon with a community development person from the MEDC who tells us that there may, dangle the carrot, pull it away, may be grant money for building enhancements. Uh, without doing any personal research, just basing this off of her uh, description in our short meeting, um, there's a possibility that that grant could be all encompassing, handling the repairs, the security cameras, the phone upgrade, um, and maybe some other things that we haven't even thought about yet. So um, I, I would like to get that building situation uh, bid and approved and working so we don't go through another freeze thaw cycle which will exacerbate the problem um, it's something that I believe just happened probably this spring with the thaw no one noticed until they found water down there so I think it's something that we caught in time um, some of the suggestions have also been to put gutters on the building to change the grade to modify the runoff um, we were worried that this would be an extremely expensive project and the quotes, as I said, are, are encouraging. So that's where we are. So uh, the library's got a, uh, of course, 40% of this expense is theirs, 30% is the police department. Um, are they gonna talk about this at their next meeting? I meeting? hope so. I'm happy to be there and explain. Okay. And hopefully by then we'll have a third quote. And you might want to give Kathy Cole a call. Can, can you explain what you found out so far about the that, actual that repairs required? That both of the contractors are suggesting an anchor system where they install plates on the inside of the cement block wall, bore through to an anchor that puts screw tension to keep the wall from moving further in. Um, there is minimal movement. It's probably under an inch. It is visible to the naked eye. Um, they say that this method can correct up to a three inch variance. <coughs> Did they put a straight edge on it to get any they kind put of a laser on it? Okay, let's both, see better. Both methods, both, <coughs> both bits, laser. So, so the way forward really is waiting to hear back from the library. Um, 
Well, I, the fact that this is an emergency, I, I think that it kind of changes the dynamic, but I don't think that they would object. I mean, it's got to get done. So, well, <laughs> but, but, you know, there, there, is a, there is a shared cost agreement in effect, and I don't see any reason why that doesn't apply. I mean, I don't want to go out and hire an engineer without their approval. Um, the, the cost, of, remember, this engineer is just reviewing bids. Okay, I it's still a cost. About five hundred dollars. That's what I've been told so far. Well, and we, we could we could get Aaron to bid this as well, but I think he's overwhelmed with sewers. So I don't want to get that. Yeah, I, that's why I've avoided him till now. Right. But I, I have. I'm speaking with a, a company in Gaylord and looking for other engineers. There, so again, so who are the two bids from that you have in here? Mayors and Foundation Systems of Michigan. So do you know somebody who might be interested in the work and will give us a bid? Yes. Um, I know. But it's got to be a, a foundation. When's, when's the next oh, library meeting? Ayers. Uh, I don't Ayers. know. A-Y-E-R-S. Third Tuesday. Is it? So. Yeah, it's the third Tuesday. Is it? So, next week from today. So that was the discussion. Is there any motion around this that needs to be established? I want, I want to look at the preservation calendar here. I think we're premature. For motion, you just do this as a discussion point to make us aware of what's going on. Maps. And, and you have another, com a third company that you're getting a bid yes. from that you've already identified? Company out of Traverse City. Uh, their next meeting is August 15th at 3.30. That would be a week from today at 3.30. Can you make that? I think so. You might want to ask her to put you on the agenda. Okay. Okay, any Ron. other discussion on this issue? I'd like to thank Ron for looking into this. Yeah, I appreciate it's very it. very important. Um, you going to talk about that meeting we had today at board comments? Might be good. But yeah. The rest of the board, no? Okay, um, next item, J, budget and CIP adjustments. Yes. Um, I have a I have a Metro Act right of way permit extension, which if you have a copy of, I'll try to explain this a little bit. Every five years, uh, the extension needs to be uh, needs to be uh, re recalculated or extended, if you will. Um, the last extension occurred in 2018, so this extension would uh, be set or would a be there until 2028, I believe. Yes. Oh, I see why it's a budget adjustment. So, what, what, and this is just a really more of an info, information item for the board. Um, this is something we've done before. Uh, typically, we get about six, uh, sixty-seven hundred to seven thousand dollars a year. Uh, we've already gotten seven thousand in 2023, and there's another twenty-two hundred eighty-two dollars for underpayment due in May. Uh, of next year. Well, yeah, it'll be given to us in 24, but they, they basically have already stated there's an underpayment. In, in any case, um, at and I guess, has about 70% of the right-of-way, and so they, they basically make up most of the um, uh, revenue that comes to us. Secondly, since the County Road Commission handles um, all of our roads, all the permitting that's needed to be done for granting any kind of uh, right of way for people doing any kind of construction digging or whatever, uh, the Road Commission has to handle. So we're really not even in the permit basis. Um, and then I guess the, you know, the, it's the linear feet of cable in the township that uh, is used to as criteria to establish what the fees will be on any given the work or the right of ways that were conducted so that's all I know not a lot but give you a little bit more background well this says I guess the reason we need a budget adjustment is because we're going to get an additional two thousand two hundred eighty two dollars and forty three cents because on May 31st we got seven thousand and some dollars and we should have got Nine thousand three hundred fifty-three dollars and thirty cents. Well, and I, I assume that the May first was not in there as a budget item, so that it may be something that needs okay. to be added as well. So, 
is there any action required on our part? Well, the uh, I just need agreement to go ahead and sign for this extension, number one, and then number two, we'll go back and double check the budgets and make the necessary budget adjustments. Okay. You want to make that motion? So, yes, uh, I move that uh, we sign the at and uh, permit for an extension ending 12-31-28 for this uh, right-of-way <coughs> permit, and that uh, we adjust any revenue budgets according to the handout that I provided here. I say that because we'll make sure that it hasn't already been entered, but uh, we'll make, make the Is adjustments. there a second? Support that. Okay, any more discussion? Not for me. Uh, Janet? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. CIP. Um, I move that we freeze all CIP spending mm -hmm. until the board says otherwise, except for the crack ceiling line laying at the airport, which is a safety issue, the River Street steps, and add and, uh, and add any necessary funding for our problem downstairs. I just think, um, you know, we have all year to do CIP. Well, anyway, let me finish my motion. I, I, I would like to just uh, only proceed with the airport CIP and the River Street steps for now and hold up all other projects uh, in a beta in abeyance. That's my motion. With or without the building repair? The well, building wasn't really on the CIP. It, be a no, it wasn't. Was it, but, it but, but we need to hang on to it. That's why I'm doing this. Okay. Is there a second? I will support that. Okay, discussion. So, you know, we, we passed the CIP, we have our priorities, but it doesn't mean that it has to be done right now. We got, a, we got another <clears throat> 10 months. And when winter taxes come in, uh, you know, we'll be in a better position. <coughs> Doug will still get his truck, you know, after winter taxes come in. He wants to wait till winter anyway. Um, I just think we need to just, uh, out of the sake of caution and to make sure that we don't go below our reserves, uh, we just kind of slow down a bit, hang on. So, I think that's wise. So the only CIP we've registered so far, to my knowledge, is the uh, cemetery uh, tree removals. And well, right, and, and and that can wait as well. Well, it's it's paid for, it's done. So yes, it's, but, but not all of it. Well, there'll be more is what you're saying, so yeah. We'll right, wait. so we'll just wait. So... Uh, well, that's fine, I just want to clarify that. Yeah, so we, we let a contract on the fence and uh, two contracts on the trees. So uh, the other 5,000 can wait until spring. We have to wait anyway with the trees anyway once they go into a certain stage. Yeah. Yeah, that's Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, public comments. Step right up. Hello, my name is Patrick McGinnis. On January 23rd, 2023, during a township meeting public comment period, I suggested that Bob Kramer take an anger management course because of his multiple displays of anger and violence during township meetings. I guess Bob did not take my well-meaning advice because it has come to light that Bob has now made threats to harm me. On May 11th, 2023, around 3 p.m., Bob made the following comments. I'd taken preemptive action. Yeah, boom, out of Compton. The him he was referring to was me. Knowing that, as I've been told, Bob Kramer packs and has a CPL, a threat to harm is the only way I could take those comments. Once again, I would recommend that Bob get some help before he does hurt someone. 
The following is a continuation of my comments from the Ju July 27th meeting, 2023. Tonight, Bob Kramer had a motion in the consent agenda which reads, Motion, Supervisor seeks board approval for the appointment of Rod Grandy to the Planning Commission for a three-year term, effective September 1st. This is the same Rod Grandy who has cussed during township meetings, he has disrupted township meetings, he has walked out of township meetings, and has tried to stop board members from speaking during board comments. I can't ask for an apology during public comments when I have the floor, but Bob Kramer considers Rod the type of person who should be on a township board. Is this because Bob knows that Rod will do as he is told? In closing, Bob, basic PAO 101. Get the names correct on your pictures. Bob, now is the time for you to bang your little gavel, call me out of order, and say, Siri, call 911. Thank you. Public comment, anybody else? <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse my disheveled look this evening. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that we have a small airport in town. The Indian River International Airport Tire Center and drive through is a, is a wonderful place. We love it. As a general aviation enthusiast, um, I own fixed wing aircraft, I have a small jet, and I can tell you nothing is free in the aviation world. Nothing. The one thing I would caution the board on is this, though. Um, when you look at a long-term lease, five years, ten years, whatever, for a ground piece of ground, I don't know if we've looked at other things that are also seasonal, that are year-round or whatever. I can tell you a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 20 you store and lock is over 100 bucks a month. I can tell you our slips at the marina, small to large, range anywhere from $1,800 to almost $3,200 for six months. Now granted, that's a hole in the ground and we, the owners, are responsible for keeping the structure safe for someone to be there. But the, the draw of the airport is the fact that it's here as a community. As we build a community and people can small, fly small fixed wing aircraft into, this, into the area, it's very convenient. I've been to my fair share of Saturday and Sunday morning fly-ins and pancake breakfasts. We've all done that. I would encourage the hangar owners to do more outreach that way, to bring more people into the town. I know it's not inexpensive to do it, but putting up a tent, having a, a Sunday morning or Saturday morning, to bring some people to the area. Um, I happen to agree with Jay that you know revenue neutral would be good, um, but I understand from a, a survey that 14% of the, you know, the populace in Indian River uses the airport. Now, when we look at 2,138 people as a year-round population here, that's almost 300 people that use the airport. I would have a tendency to disagree with those figures. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, going forward, you know, in order to add stability to the area, long-term leases at the airport are needed, and people have you know substantial investments in those hangars. I got it. But I think that. If we take a large group of people that would benefit more, um, I think the township board needs to agree that a handful of people on hangars, there's a whole lot of other people out there that need safe city streets, need downtowns to walk in, things to do. And so I think that in the long run, the airport can be fiscally responsible. Uh, the owners that are there with their leaseholds, I mean, 10 year lease is not insubstantial, and they will be paying. But I think, that, you know, I think it has to be at least a revenue neutral situation where it doesn't cost the population who pay taxes to support something for a handful of people. Okay. Um, I believe in aviation. I think it's a great thing. Uh, it's a non-controlled airport, an uncontrolled airport. I don't know the current FAA regulations as far as making sure the area is fenced for security. I know that the airports that we go in, they take it very, very seriously. I can't imagine a, you know, someone with a, with a plane is going to fly into Pat Gary's or something along those lines, but um, certainly it's something that we have to make sure the airport is secure for the people that are there. I agree with you know paying for parking or paying for takeoff landing, whatever it might be. It'd be nice to maybe you know have the actual you know a fuel tank that would come or a fuel a fuel uh, truck that would come down and be able to have the fly in there and have people be able to top off their tanks. So anyway, three minutes is over. Um, thank you so much and uh, keep flying. Thanks, Bob. Any other comments? That question 
that question on the airport, um, the percent of people that visited, I marked that yes because I drove out there. My husband marked it yes because he drove out there. We don't use the airport, but all of the conflab that was going on over the airport, a lot of people went out there to see. They didn't even know we had an airport. So you can't use that that 14% or whatever that percent amount that you mentioned was not people flying into the airport. It's people like me that drove out there. Thank you. Public comment. Public comment is closed. Board comment. Board comment. I have one. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we had a nice talk with... Um, Mike. Mike, please. Let me do the microphone. Yes, sorry. We had a meeting today with a representative from MEDC about funding for a parking lot, funding for um, different structures that are available in our downtown area, um, funding that may help this building, like what uh, Ron talked about, um, that may be available. Um, it really opened my eyes as far as availability of, of things out there that we could probably take advantage of. Um, enhance, if we enhance uh, the parking lot, it might be um, considered a DNR trail project. Um, I'm going to be looking into that. Um, so it kind of gave us some opportunities to look at to see what was available um, to help with the parking situation in town and also uh, upgrading some of the storefronts and things like that. That's what is available. And um, then we asked too about the building. So um, anyway, it gave us some opportunities to look into to see if it fits. And I'm, I'm very encouraged that we can get some things done with some grants moving forward. So that's all I had to say. I'm okay. Nothing. Uh, real quick, um, I want to thank her for coming to MEDC. Uh, they are, uh, she is going to come to the parks meeting on the 30th mm -hmm. and uh, talk to them about a, a program uh, that's very, very popular in St. Ignace. In fact, our administrative assistant, Chris Green, yeah, I uh, told me that. all about it. Yep. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, the airport, again, I'll say what I always say. I support the airport, and I think uh, in the very short term, we're going to be revenue neutral for the next three years. But as everyone said, we need to look well beyond that, and I think we're going to do that um, with help of the hangar owners. Um, I did hear the board loud and clear at the last meeting. You want a parking plan? Uh, you want to know about parking before you make any kind of a decision. So I will ask the DDA to weigh in on that at the coming meeting. I have contacted uh, OHM or OMH. Uh, uh, Chris, yeah, uh, Chris Powell uh, to see uh, what kind of service they could offer as far as a study or a concept or a parking plan since they did the streetscape. But I just want to slow the train down uh, to make sure uh, that the DDA has the lead um, as, as much as they want to take it because it is their streetscape and their downtown. So if I get more information uh, from uh, Chris Powell, I'll present it to the DDA first and then I'll get it uh, to the board. Is there any other further comments? Motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Nice Stay safe. Stuff.